take two Londoners who prior to this video did not know each other, who both moved to Italy three years ago, one to Rome and one to Salerno, and who both ended up with Sicilian boyfriends. And what do you get? You get this incredible interview. I am so excited to introduce to you Sabrine. I connected with her on Instagram because honestly, in Italy, there are not many Londoners. I know one other Londoner in Salerno and I think Sabrine just knew me when I connected with her. So we're a bit of a rare breed. And I think when you come from London, you have a very specific perspective and character that is very different when you come from other parts of the UK. So this video is very insightful and very funny. And we talk very openly about our experiences of living here in Italy. You can find Sabrina on Instagram. This is her fabulous page. And let's get into the interview, shall we? Thank you so much for joining me today for this interview. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I want to start because we are two Londoners living in Italy. I was like, what are the chances? So I'm curious to know, tell us about you. What brought you to Italy? Because this is the number one question that everybody asks me. <laughs> Why did you come here? So I'm asking you the same. <laughs> Yes, no, I always get that question as well, especially when people are like, London, why did you leave London to come to Italy? And you're like, oh my God. Okay, but yes, so I am uh, yeah, born and raised in London, like just like you. And I, so I moved to Italy, it will be three years, I think like in a week or something, like the first of October. Same. This is my third year anniversary. This is spooky. Oh. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> I moved to Italy pretty much at the same time. <laughs> um, Okay, so yes, yeah, so it'll be three years, like in October, um, and I, I live in Rome, and I am a copywriter. What brought you to Italy? Like, what brought you to come and live here? What made you make that big decision? Um, do you know what? I, like, all of my friends from London will, like, will be the first ones to say that I've always been so obsessed with Italy, like, always. <laughs> and I think, like, I always wanted to live here, but I never really made a plan to, like, to make the move. Um, and then it happened like really randomly actually. I was working in a bar and I just really hated it. Like I hated it so much. I was like, oh, I don't, this isn't what I want to be doing. And like, I just kept like bouncing between random jobs, like trying to find my thing. And I got like, oh, it was just really overwhelming. And like, I just came home one day and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna move to like Spain or Italy or France or somewhere and um, I don't know, just, do that for a while, not knowing like what to do for work or anything. Um, and then yeah, like I found a really cheap flight going to Rome. It was like twelve pounds or something. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, it was so funny because I was just looking out of like curiosity. I just had a shit day, and I was like, oh, let me see what what the flights are saying to like fly away from this place. <laughs> yeah, and I just found like one way London to Rome, thirteen pounds, and I was like what that's so cheap so I just booked it and then like I think it was four weeks later or five weeks later I just um got on the plane and <laughs> came in I love it and it's really similar to my story like I speak about this a lot in some of my other videos I came on holiday in 2017 for the first time and I was like oh, I could live here <laughs> and that's how my story began <laughs> very spontaneous <laughs> I love that I know and tell me like you're like coming to Italy you started obviously your life here with your work is it has it been through your copyright work that you've continued to work or have you actually found a job here in Italy so at the beginning I so I was copywriting when I was in London but it wasn't really enough to be like a full-time job I just had mm -hmm. like one client kind of here or there so it wasn't really anything um so I started teaching English when I first came here and I was teaching English for the first year and then sort of while I was working in these English schools, I was like trying to build up my copywriting portfolio to eventually be able to do that full time. And that took me about a year to do. Um, and so, yeah, right now I'm, I'm, I work full time as a copywriter from home. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad actually that I did have like the English teaching, um, I don't know, experience or like the first year doing that because it did take a lot of stress out of, I don't know, like, I think like it's so easy for us to kind of teach English in another country. I think if I didn't have that kind of crutch, mm -hmm. 
from when I first got here. I honestly don't know what I would have done. Like I got my first apartment from like uh, someone, a random like fellow teacher that I worked with or like it was all kind of connected. So yes. for a year. But this is Italy. Like, I don't know about like you, but I find that in Italy, it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Like, everything is linked, intertwined with everything else. <laughs> oh my God, definitely. You know, what? it's like I kind of used to hate that whole "it's not who what you know, but who you know" mentality because honestly, it's kind of like not fair because if you don't know people, then you're screwed. Ah, uh, yes. But when you're kind of in the situation, like now, I'm. Oh my God, I love it so much. Like. <laughs> I love the fact that the, the connections that I've made are getting me places. I don't know what I do without all the people that I've met so far in the yes. world. <laughs> True. I love it as well. And I think, you know, it's a nice culture because you kind of have all these opportunities that present themselves just because you know someone who knows someone or <laughs> or someone's part of this Facebook group and they know about this thing in Italy it's fabulous I actually really do quite like it <laughs> it's very different to London I think whereas I think in London which actually brings us really nicely into this first section I want to talk to you about life in London versus life in Italy because I feel life in London you are judged more perhaps on your academic ability, your experience, your skills, when it comes to work especially, what do you think? What Do you agree? 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I feel like, do you know, I might even, like, I might even go as far as to say that knowing people in uh, in certain, certain fields of work, I don't really know, like in certain industries, knowing people can actually even hinder your chances because, like, you might not get a promotion because your manager will be like, Oh, if I give her a promotion, people think it's just because I know her as a friend. Or so it actually doesn't matter, who you know, because you're always going to get the shit end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's like the reverse situation to Italy, whereas it's actually like considered to be a um, a compliment if you know someone who refers you to somebody else. But in London, it isn't the same at all. I agree. Yeah, no, in London it would be considered more as like, you know, it had nothing really to do with like your skills or how competent you are, it's just that you just got like a shortcut, whereas here, I feel like people really, like if you're nice to someone once, they would just remember that forever. <laughs> definitely, definitely, I agree. <laughs> It's actually really beautiful. So I'm curious to know, because moving here is obviously living in Italy is very different to living in London. Whereabouts in London did you used to live? Was it South London? So South West. I'm from like Fulham, Chelsea area. Ah, very nice. I'm from South East. So there you go. <laughs> very nice. So compared to where you obviously were brought up to come into Italy, what are the big differences that you found in your experiences of living here? Ooh, that's a loaded yeah. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> oh my god, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like I I don't think I can think of a single similarity. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> every single aspect of especially daily life is just so different. And like I don't know, aside from the kind of standard things of like, you know, we have different eating times and different you know, London is, you, obviously London is a really fast city, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. And, but the thing is, because most people that I know in Rome will complain about, like, how fast Rome is as a city. And I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like if I walk any slower, I'm going to be moving backwards like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, <for me>. yes. <laughs> like, and that just translates into, it kind of pours into so many different areas of life. Like, I, I know it sounds really basic to be like, you know, London's faster, Italy is slower, but it means so much because the pace in which, I don't know, you make plans with friends or having dinner or just trying to put on a bloody movie to watch, like, things are just... Like, <laughs> everything is so so I can't get used to the fact that like my friends will tell me like maybe five minutes before where we're going and what we're doing my boyfriend does not like to make plans he's like oh just be in the moment be in the moment I'm like I'm not used to being in the moment we plan Christmas in September come on <laughs> oh my god yeah that's no, so true I feel like it's also because the Italians don't mind walking and like I don't, I mean, I never walked, <laughs> I never walked before I came to Rome, like, I would get a bus, or I'd jump in an Uber for what would be literally a 15 minute walk, or like, a 20 minute, it just, I just wouldn't do it, 
It's true. I relied on my car so much when I lived in London and now I don't. I have a I converted my license before Brexit, which oh, I'm so glad I did because now you've got to take the Italian driving test. I cannot think of anything worse. But um oh. Oh, do you have to convert your license still? No, I don't. I, I don't have a license. I don't even drive in London. Oh. <laughs> so when I when I do learn to drive, I'll be doing it for the first time in Rome, which is wow. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, maybe it will be easier because you can pick up the habits of driving over here rather than remembering how people drive in the UK. <laughs> it might be easier for you. Yeah, that's what everyone says to me, but like. Romans drive like insanely fast and like the, the whole situation is insane like I get scared crossing the road or, yes oh. oh crossing the road let's talk about crossing the road you know like in the UK cars stop for you to cross the road here you have to be like 10 Hail Marys and just cross and hope that somebody stops otherwise you're there all day <laughs> I feel like now I'm kind of getting like a little, not, not used to it. I still like die with anxiety every single time I need to cross the road. But the difference is not like I just do it on the inside. Like the drivers can't tell by my face. <laughs> like, in the beginning, I remember I'd be standing there waiting for like a little green man. I'd be like, it's green and cop just going all over the place. And I'll see like two old ladies holding hands and they'll just walk along. And like the cars just kind of swerve around them. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> There is no highway code in Italy. I don't think it exists. <laughs> no, it's crazy, but no, at least, yeah, when I do learn to drive, I'll, like, I'll be doing it here, and even I'll have to do, I don't think they do the test in English, do they? No, it's all in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> A nice little challenge for you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to be tough, I'm sure. But I think you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be fine. But yeah, it's not easy. But I think that, gosh, I just think there's so many differences here. You're absolutely right. And I used to drive, as I was saying, I don't drive here because I have my license, but I'm nervous. <laughs> because yeah. the driving over here is like something I've never seen in my whole life. Like people don't indicate, people drive like up your bumper. Yeah. And it's just mad, completely mad. Yeah. <laughs> No, I get no. This is literally why I've not until now. I've still not taken on the challenge of getting my license. So I'm just like, you know what? I don't. I don't want to increase my probabilities of I don't, dying. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> it is so. But the thing is, because I've never driven, so for me, it's even like it's just insane. Obviously, for someone yes. drive anyway. So you know. But listen, I think I honestly think you're going to be okay because you're going to immediately start learning to drive on the opposite side of the road whereas yeah. for me I find this difficult like <laughs> being on the opposite side of the road I stress my boyfriend out so much when I drive his car because he's like you're too near the middle because I'm like <laughs> trying to adjust to driving on the other side of the road so I think you've got that in your favor definitely <laughs> oh, god, <thank> you. <laughs> oh my god so aside from all from these factors what other aspects of life here do you find different or difficult even difficult from life in the from life in London especially I think like I've, I've kind of gone around the whole world of like all of the all of the little differences what I find difficult etc and like it always comes down to the same point which seems really small and it seems really insignificant like it's not about work it's not about language it's not about any of that it's more the fact that I don't know if you agree, but like in London, I've never really felt bad and I've never really seen my friends feel bad about voicing something that maybe, I don't know, things in a restaurant, like a, a dish that just wasn't <gasps> nice. Or like li little mini confrontations, not big ones, not like starting arguments or anything, but just like little things like that does not exist here. <laughs> No! Oh my god! I done a video all about this because I feel Italians are really passive when it comes to these situations. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. I'm so glad that you agree because it seems like such a small thing to like complain about, but it's something that is so. It's just a part of like daily life that when you're in a situation where it's literally the opposite, it's like it kind of almost feels like you have no voice anymore. Like you can't. Yes, you can't like voice and it's not even like you just want to complain for the sake of complaining. Like perhaps what you want to say is constructive. It's going to help the business or the service in a particular place. 
But you're right. Nobody says anything here. And I'll give you a very recent example. We went to an ice cream shop, my boyfriend and I, and we'd never been there before. And he got this brioche with ice cream. And he's used to having a lot of ice cream in the brioche, right? And this particular shop didn't do as much as what he's used to. And I was like, why don't you go and say something? Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. But okay, why not? Like, if you're not happy with the quantity of ice cream, go and say to them, could you please, can I have some more? I'm not happy. No. Oh I don't God. understand. <laughs> I'm so, honestly so glad. Like, I'm so glad it's not just me. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Because I feel that we're coming from London, like, we, like, customer service, people complain about everything. I used to work in retail. And if, honestly, if the service isn't, like, a one people ask to speak to the manager and want oh. to complain about something all the time over anything even the smallest most i don't know not important thing of all somebody wants to raise a complaint but yeah. here nothing <laughs> yeah, no, it's, so, it's so weird sometimes I'm, like most of the time i can just brush it off and i'm like fine it's not that important blah 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 but like me and my boyfriend have argued especially in the first year of our relationship like oh my god we used to argue at, uh, almost every single time that we'd go out, like for drinks or for dinner or for anything, there'd always be a situation like my spritz would be flat and I'd, I'd like to sip. <laughs> this is probably the most common thing that happens. Like my drink is flat. That's oh. <laughs> like take a sip and I'd be like, oh, it's a bit flat. And he'll be like, oh, no, like it's, it's fine. And I'm like, oh, don't tell me that it's fine. But like, <laughs> My drink is flat <laughs> and I'll like signal to get the waiter and he'll be like, no, no, no. Like he'll be like really distressed about the fact that I'm really something about it. And I'm like, I, you know, his, 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 his father is not like the founder of this drink. Like he's not going to be that effect. He's just going to put some more of the sparkly or whatever it is in the drink. Problem solved. But, oh my God. But you know, the problem is, and I think in a way it's counterproductive because they don't speak at the time, Italians, but they speak with their feet. So maybe they don't go back to that business or they don't recommend it to their friends, which in turn hurts that business. Like it's more productive to address the problems at the time. And then guess what? Maybe they won't repeat the problems again. Yeah, maybe. Oh God, that's exactly what I always say to my boyfriend as well, especially when it's something that can easily be fixed. A flat drink yeah. or the plate food was cold. Okay, that doesn't really happen, but little fixable things. And I always say that to him. Yeah. I'm like, get better if I just say what I want to say and he's like yeah but you're not going to change an entire restaurant oh my god this is not like my boyfriend <laughs> it's the Sicilian in them I'm sure it's the Sicilian he, my boyfriend says exactly the same thing <laughs> oh my god. And, like, and I remember when my boyfriend came to London with me um we went to any old pub I think it was even like Weatherspoons it was just like, any old pub um like as soon as we got there and we both got a drink. I got a glass of wine. And, like, as she gave me the glass of wine, a little fly, like, came in and, like, went inside the glass. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't her fault. It was a, a fly, right? But, obviously, I wasn't, I didn't want to drink it. So, I was, I asked her. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I really don't want to be a pain. But, like, a big fly has just come into my drink. And she was like, oh, my God, no worries. Like, let, here you go. Like, let me take it. And she just, like, splashed it into the sink, poured me another one. Here you go. Asked my boyfriend is his, if his drink was fine. And he was like, yeah. After she left, I just looked at him and I was like, that's how it's done. Like, quick, yes. first, no one was offended, problem got solved. <laughs> But listen, it's customer service, right? This is customer service. Like, customer is king. Like, that's kind of how, like, when you're in retail in the UK, especially, that's how you're trained. Like, the customer's always right, maybe not always, but you have to behave that way. And that's kind of how it is. But here, like, for example, refunds, they don't exist here in Italy. What What's a refund? Is there even a word in Italian for a refund? <laughs> I don't even know. Rimborso? Maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm just guessing because I've never received one. <laughs> <laughs> never. And this is the thing, like, in the UK, if, like, if you have buy a product and there's a problem with it, you can take it back to the shop and oh. they will exchange. Or This is all ties into customer service. But here, if you buy something and it's wrong or there's a problem with it, you are on your own. Like, there's no customer care. Oh, no, they don't. I remember, actually, my first few months when I was here and I bought a top from somewhere, I don't remember. And when I bought it home, I realized it was ripped a bit, like, at the seam. And I, mm. took, it back. I took it back literally the same day. It was, like, a couple of hours later. And she was like, no, you did this. 
No! <laughs> and honestly, I couldn't really speak Italian. Like, I had just gotten here. And I was like, no, I didn't. And she was like, no, no, you did this. And then she went to the rack and pulled out another one. And she was like, look, this one doesn't have a rip. You did this. And I was like, oh, my God. I don't know how to navigate the situation. <laughs> I, at the end, like, I ended up apologizing and just leaving. <laughs> I apologise for the rip I didn't do. <laughs> no, it isn't. And this is, this is where it all stems into. And I think, you know, it doesn't help when people don't speak and voice their opinion. So it kind of all stems back into that point that you've raised, definitely. What about, though, um, things that you've learned? So obviously, like, there are some things that aren't so easy about life here. We all know this, especially coming from London. But what about things that you've learned since you've lived here? Like, have you made changes to your lifestyle since living here, like positive changes? Yes, actually. Ah. I, I, I feel like I've actually made so many positive lifestyle changes, but they've all been really, really small. Um, I would say the main one... Not all the time, but I feel like I drink differently now. Mm, yes, tell me more. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I don't need to tell you, you know, the drinking situation in London. We're all a bunch of piss heads. <laughs> a little bit out of control. <laughs> we are like a bunch of alcoholics in the UK. It's very true. <laughs> I feel like in London, we're kind of just all like a bunch of kids that, like, someone has just given alcohol to. Like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, I'm like in. Um, so at the beginning, I used to think that people in Rome or Italians in general don't drink a lot. That was kind of my experience. I used to be like, how could everyone's just sitting there with the same drink for like an hour? That's so weird. <laughs> but now that I've been here for like three years, I'm so happy that they sit there with a drink for an hour because I sit there now with a drink for an hour and I don't get like obliterated drunk like I used to. <laughs> the same. Do you know what? I've never seen a person crazy drunk here in Italy. Have you? No, never. Like, yeah. you know, you see pictures of, like, people, especially, like, oh, I don't like to generalise, but, like, you know, up north, like, Manchester, Liverpool, and in London sometimes, throwing up in the street, like, wah, I never see that here, ever. Either. And I thought that was a stereotype before I came here. I used to read all over the internet on blogs and Instagram, um, you know, and you just research, like, cultural differences, England to yeah. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Those of people saying, oh, the only drunk, it was always a sentence, the only drunk people in Italy are tourists and teenagers. And I used to think, yeah, right. Like, that's bullshit. Like, that can't be true. But I, I think it is true. I think it is. And I think as well, like, alcohol was introduced to Italians a lot younger as well, as opposed to, like, in the UK. Like, like you'll have, I don't know, like, young teenagers or even, like, you know, 11, 12 years old. Maybe they'll have a tiny, teeny, tiny little glass of wine with dinner for example with the family so I wonder if that helps because in the UK it's like I don't know I didn't drink well I started drinking underage but like 15 maybe 14 15 um <laughs> but it was a bit of a taboo like it wasn't something that was normal so I wonder if that plays a part in it perhaps maybe I think it might but like in the UK I mean it's even worse in America because their legal age is 21 oh my god <laughs> but like in England obviously it's 18 but it does mean that as soon as you turn 18, you just kind of like release. So <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah. So yeah, maybe that does have something to do with it. But I, it's something that now I, I really appreciate that yeah. I've definitely, I definitely drink with more moderation now, 100%. Um, and I always notice a difference if I were to, if I go out with like my British or American friends, I go straight back to 2010. <laughs> Yeah, like we drink so much, we drink fast, we're talking so much, and it's like we're all on speed. Like it's just everything happens so quickly. <laughs> Whereas with my Italian friends, with my boyfriend and his friends, that never happens, and I like piano, it. Piano, piano. <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely a, a good change, I think. Yes, it is. And I'm not quite at that point yet. Like I love a glass of wine <laughs> to the point where when I go to my boyfriend's family in Sicily, I'm like, I'm not an alcoholic. It's just a cultural thing. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, that is me too. When I was in Sicily at my, my boyfriend's family's house, I just thought that we were all drinking wine at dinner every evening. I, <laughs> even 
talking about? Did they buy it just for you? It's just me. So, <laughs> oh, no idea. Like, we, so my boyfriend's mum doesn't drink at all. Same. Always buys like wine and like um, like amaro limoncello for all of us. So she would like put the wine on the table and everyone would be pouring. But like, I would really be the only one drinking. But I just I didn't notice. It was only after a few days when like my boyfriend's dad wanted to get a bit of the wine. And my boyfriend's mom was like, no, 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 that's for her. What are you doing? Don't touch it. And I was like, oh, my God, I've been branded an alcoholic. What? <laughs> but that's the same for me. Like, this summer, my boyfriend's family were just buying the wine for me. <laughs> so, oh, my God, we, we're stereotypes. <laughs> we, are. we are walking British stereotypes. I've got a glass of wine. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> Cheers, love. Chin chin. <laughs> we are definitely British stereotypes right there. That is hilarious. <laughs> but listen, talking about the wine, not that I am an alcoholic, but the price of wine in Italy, oh dear God, it's so cheap here compared to London, don't you think? Oh my God, yeah, it's cheaper and better. Yes. Oh my God, yeah, no, it's true. No, every time I go back to London and I go to Tesco or Sainsbury's to get a bottle of wine, not only are they all like screw top bottles. Oh, the worst, the worst type. <laughs> yeah, like I wouldn't even find one bottle that has like a corkscrew. They'll all be like screw tops. I'll be like, okay, well, that's fine. And the cheapest one will be like nine pounds or eight pounds. And I'm like calculating in my mind, I'm like, that's like 12 euros. I could get like a good bottle of wine like for 12 euros. <laughs> definitely it's crazy like totally crazy and I think but it's a good thing because listen if the wine was that cheap in London everyone yeah. would literally be an alcoholic like a registered alcoholic for definite oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's so true <laughs> it's probably a good thing it's just here <laughs> so reducing your alcohol content that's a positive change any other changes that you've made since living here um yes I feel like I'm much more, you know what this might actually sound like this might not really make sense because we have a reputation being from England of being really polite mm-hmm. and apologizing all the time. Mm-hmm. But I actually think I've become more polite since being in Rome. <laughs> in terms of like I like I would never really, you know, I'd never really say hello to my neighbours in London or I mean ever, ever. I don't even know their names. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, it's so true. I agree with you. I hundred percent. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, that's so good because I I don't know. Like first, I thought like you know what Italians seem really extroverted compared to Brits. Like they're okay, they might not voice their opinion when their apple spritz is flat, but <laughs> I feel like they're kind of raised to be much more extroverted than us. Like yes, like billions of like oral tests at school, and speaking exams, and this and that, and you know their family dynamics. They talk a lot, but so like that's obviously a, a positive, but. I now find myself, like, you know, I'll say hello to people that I would never say hello to if, if I was in the same situation, but in London, like shopkeeper, Starbucks yes. guy, neighbour, postman, like. Everybody, buongiorno, buongiorno, buongiorno. Listen, and here as well, they are so friendly because it was the same for me. Like, I never used to say hello to anyone. You'd walk past someone on the street. If you started saying hello to somebody, <laughs> some random stranger in the street in London, people would think that there was something the matter with you. So, <laughs> likewise, if I'm walking in the street in London and someone randomly says hello to me, I'm like looking at my bag. I'm naturally to be like, good morning, like back to come. That would be really weird. <laughs> I love that but listen in London I don't walk with my phone in my hand like I don't know about you but my phone is in my bag strapped to my shoulder whereas here I feel a lot safer I'll walk around a bit more freely yeah I know for sure I remember like also in the beginning my boyfriend would also like little moments where we'd be leaving the house and walking to the bus or whatever and then he'll turn around to me and he'd be like why didn't you say hello to them and I'm like to who like I didn't even see anyone. Like, I was just walking, like, in my own world. And then I turned around, it's like a whole family. And it's like our neighbor that I guess, yes. is, like, buongiorno, whatever to us. And my boyfriend, obviously, being Italian, engaged uh, in. Oh, my God, <laughs> that's so funny. But, or, like, we'd leave a restaurant and I would just kind of smile and be like, mm, you know, like, I wouldn't, like, shout across the room, like, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just kind of look, not like, when you leave? And my boyfriend would be like, you know, they were really nice to us. Why didn't you say goodbye properly? And I'm like, I'm not a bad person. Like, <laughs> <laughs> We're not used to this, speaking to strangers. <laughs> So, but that is, that is like a really good thing because now I'm, I feel like I'm much more aware of my surroundings. I'm more aware of like, okay, I walked past this place yesterday and we made eye contact. So I'm going to say hello today. And it, obviously with each, as time goes on, it becomes more and more natural. But at the beginning, yeah, it was yeah. that calculated. Like, I would literally like think it over in my head and be like, is that the woman that said hello to me? I can't even say hello back to her. Oh, so. definitely. And you know what? Like I remember the sweetest thing that happened to me, which I was like, this would absolutely hands down never happen in London um in the communal block that I live in um I was waiting for the lift for the elevator and somebody's house door was like right next to where the lift is and basically they didn't just want to shut it with me standing at the lift they were like permiss or like is it okay for them to close the door to go inside their house I was like see Cheto, this would never happen in London boof the door's closed <laughs> slammed in your face like that would never happen that would never happen never and I think I agree with you I've definitely become a lot more considerate since living here like I think I've always been like really friendly but with people I know not with people that I don't know so for this I 100% agree with you it's the same for me definitely it's a big positive but obviously like living here is amazing I think it's amazing I love it we've both been here three years so for this there's something that's keeping us here <laughs> um but do you miss anything about London yes I I think the main thing I mean I miss loads of little things like I miss like little home comforts like I miss all my favorite biscuits and I miss all my favorite packet of crisps and I miss like going to the pub and just like the pub culture that I miss so yeah. much but honestly, I, I just miss how multicultural London is. That's like the main, the biggest thing for me that like w won't change anytime soon. It might change in a few years, but there is no immediate fix to it. But it's literally the main thing that day in, day out, I think about all the time. Being from London, you just take for granted, don't you? You just kind of, you go to school with people from all sorts of nationalities, all sorts of religion, all sorts of everything. And that's it you're just used to it it's only yeah now like living here for three years every time I go back to London I'm almost not like overwhelmed but especially if it's been like during Covid I didn't go back for a year and when I went mm -hmm. back a weeks ago I literally felt it just felt so weird I was like oh my god so many colors so many shapes so many sizes so many like so so much fashion <laughs> <laughs> yes for definite like I find Italy like I've yet to go back to London I'm planning to go back hopefully in January um so it's been two years for me so I think I'm going to notice it the most when I go back um but I agree like Italy even when it comes to food like cuisine it's really like limited the choice of places like different cultures cuisines that you can eat here like compared to the UK for example definitely so true that's so true and you know what as much as I love Italian food obviously goes goes without saying it's delicious one of the best cuisines blah 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 but yes yes it's a bit of variety don't you like <laughs> yes. I mean you, you can get like Japanese there's a lot of sushi yes and maybe like Argentinian food maybe but it's really difficult to just yeah to find like I don't know different different types of cuisine and even just being around people from different countries like it's it's such a something that I always thought was such a small thing that yeah, it just mm -hmm. wanted. But here, I'm just kind of like, I, I find sometimes that a lot of people just kind of have the same opinion, mm -hmm. kind of raised in the same way, in the same type of family dynamics with the same values and morals and and all of that. And it only really comes to light during a disagreement <laughs> yes. or, like, or like a debate, or if I'm like in a group having drinks like with a group of friends and we're just debating random, I don't know, random stuff. I'll notice that like everyone has the same opinion, everyone. And I'm just like, that's obviously a, a byproduct of the fact that it is not multicultural at all. Like I can't really comp compare it to London because London's multicultural on an extreme level. It's true. So it's true. Even fun. down to like the cuisine, because I was thinking the other day, like Italy, okay, renowned for its pasta and pizza, right? It's like the cuisine of, of yeah. Italy. What is the UK? Everybody says like fish and chips and tea, but what else is there? There's nothing else because our diet is so varied. We eat food from all around the world. Yeah, 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 that's so true. Oh my God, yeah, and I always get people like, especially my boyfriend's friends in when we were in Sicily, um, 
that they're like all fascinated with like England and London and stuff and they'll be like oh so like what's the you know the main British food so do you eat fish and chips every day and I'm like people really think that we eat fish and chips every single day or like shepherd's pie every day for lunch like that's not that's not a thing <laughs> at all it's true <laughs> um all things that we miss should I say from life in London and certainly for me it's been understanding everything easily like moving to Italy I moved here barely able to say grazia so for me it's been a struggle how has your experience been with learning Italian I mean probably the same like I didn't I didn't know any Italian before I came either I I mean I booked my flight literally four weeks before coming here so I probably I learned as much as anyone can really in four weeks which was nothing (laughs) (laughs) where's the boiler and chow and 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 whatever but it was really oh my god it was so difficult it's still difficult now and you know it's obviously not true when people think that you know to learn a language you just have to get up and go to the place because oh god people say this all the time like this is the holy grail of learning a language it's not real it's not true it's not true at all it's, I feel like it's literally the same as saying like if you want if you want a six pack like you just need to spend time in the gym and it will rub off on you kind of like it just it doesn't it doesn't work unless you there are so many factors <laughs> at play it just doesn't work and like one thing that made it really difficult for me like at the beginning is as soon as I like for me it, it took me a while to feel uncomfortable speaking in Italian so a lot of people I think maybe had a similar situation where You go to the country, you start learning a few things, you get really enthusiastic about it for maybe like a few months. So you're Mm -hmm. more, you don't yet have those barriers that tells you that, you know, you're going to sound stupid or, you know, you're not, you're not making sense. Your grammar's all over the place or whatever. Before all of that sinks in and you're just kind of like excited to just say all the things that you know. But that's when people always respond back to you in English. Uh. (laughs) And then you're like, damn, but I wanted you to tell me something in Italian. (laughs) Exactly. And they'll like, obviously, they'll always do it. And I know there are loads of reasons for that, that it's kind of like too long to get into. But like, most of them just maybe want to make you feel comfortable. And also, they, I don't know, they they know that they can't really speak English. So they don't want to put themselves in any further awkwardness. But it like it's always so disheartening because you're just like I'm I'm trying. Then the more that happens, the more disheartened you get, and then all those like doubts at this point kind of sink in, and you're like, right, well, no. <laughs> it's so true, and I think like the biggest sticking point for me living here has been the language for sure. Like I spent the first year and a half to two years as like a mute, like. I would go out in social situations and my friends and my boyfriend would try and translate. But the magic of the moment's gone. Like by the time the translation has happened, everybody's talking about something new. So you kind of never feel included. Like you always feel a little bit off an outsider. I don't know how you have, if you've had similar experiences. Yeah, I think I've had identical experiences. (laughs) I think if if you're naturally like a quiet or shy person, it might be a different situation I don't know but like I talk so much like I'm a talker I can go on and on and on Claire like I can just ramble for for, for ages and like that's how I've always been and so it was so weird and so like whoo out of my comfort zone being in a position where I'm like oh my god I have no voice like I can't I can't like get my point across that is wild and it's so wild and I think it's the biggest thing that like if you think are thinking of moving to a country where your language isn't spoken you have to recognize this from the beginning because I found this so tough not being able to express my personality I'm the same as you I'm bubbly I like to have a conversation and I went literally from that to I was like the walking dead for like two years I couldn't express myself at all so yes I completely understand entirely but how um I mean with immersion like I do think it helps you to pick things up subconsciously but I don't think it's the holy grail to learning learning a language this is the difference yeah so I yeah so for the like I'm the same as you for the first two years I didn't speak in Italian at all I could Mm -hmm. and like by the second year I could understand a fair bit Mm -hmm. so I'd be there with my friends but I would like respond in English if, if they spoke English or I just like wouldn't really be speaking or just be like there in the background which was literally torture for me torture. yes so like I, I don't want to be in the background <laughs> <laughs> but 
but it was only really at the end of my second year when I went to Sicily for the first time with my boyfriend that luckily I went with him a little bit later on so that when in the beginning of our relationship I, I, I just refused to go I mean like no I didn't it's not that I refused I just knew that I would be too uncomfortable and he knew that I wouldn't be uncomfortable so we just had this like silent understanding that I'm not quite ready for Sicily just yet <laughs> <laughs> like, like he understood he was really sweet about it when I did eventually go it was after um, two years of being in Rome no one there spoke English really like no one in his family does his parents don't ditto and obviously your boyfriend's Sicilian so I'm sure ah, you- ditto ditto <laughs> yeah, like the English levels there like in like more the south part of Italy is obviously much lower than in Rome and so it was really the first time where I was it was like full immersion <laughs> I was like shit if I if I don't speak in Italian I just cannot speak and I'm actually going to be rude and these aren't just like random acquaintances this is like my boyfriend's family and his best friends that you know he's grown up with forever because Italians really stick <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, it's like glue from like childhood through to always. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was like, oh my god, I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to do it. And luckily, I mean, it's not like I could instantly speak fluently. Like, no, I obviously struggled, but I did have two years worth of listening to Italian and watching Italian like YouTubers and Instagram like influencers or reading like the odd, trying to read the odd book here and there. The, that did help when I was eventually forced to speak <laughs> but if I wasn't forced I wouldn't have I wouldn't have like if I didn't go to Sicily at that, at that point I don't think I'd be speaking Italian now ah see it was that little push you needed but the thing for me like I immediately went to Sicily so <laughs> I've like <laughs> I went there like but this summer was the first summer I could actually have a conversation with my boyfriend's parents, which was a huge progress and they could understand me. Maybe I sounded like a child, but the important thing is they could understand. <laughs> no, that's true. And I feel like with Italians anyway, in general, they're usually so enthusiastic and happy. But maybe like at the beginning, like when we were saying they'll usually just respond in, uh, in Italian, maybe because like obviously the Italian level is probably way lo- way much like lower at that point, so mm-hmm. then there wasn't even any point. <laughs> but I think when you've kind of got like a, a grasp on the language, and yes, it's, people do really are really enthusiastic, especially parents and older older Definitely. people love it. Definitely. And do you feel like now, like in terms of like your friendships and your relationship, like where you're at on your language journey, it's improved those connections with those people. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. I do have like a few friends that it's really awkward speaking in Italian with, just because we we built our friendship in English, and that's that. Mm-hmm. Unless we're in like a big group, and there are some people there that don't speak English, then that's fine. Like I don't feel weird speaking Italian, but mm-hmm. I'm just like one on one with a friend, and like an Italian friend. But we did start the friendship in English. It is way too weird now to just switch and start speaking for me. I know that's just my own my own obstacle that it doesn't exist for them (laughs) yeah no I get it though if you've started a friendship one way it's kind of weird to change direction with how you speak later on I think I understand completely so yes no I'm pleased and just like what has helped you to learn Italian has it been like through Instagram through YouTube like what has been the thing for you did you did you buy a language course did you get a teacher what has been the thing for you so I so I, I didn't take any lessons. I haven't I haven't done any Italian schools or I, I did buy a grammar book once. <laughs> <laughs> I opened it, I screamed and I slammed it <laughs> Bad boy is not for me and that was like a short sad story of the past. <laughs> so, so like no formal lessons or anything, but what I did do was, I think mostly YouTube. Like I, I'm obsessed with YouTube anyway. Like I have like loads of channels I'm subscribed to, and that's like yeah. podcasts are like my thing when I'm cleaning or whatever. Um, so I found like a few Italian YouTubers that I like, um, and I just binged them, binge watched all of them, like hit the notification button so that <laughs> I, I just watch all of their videos um, and music, I guess, like. 
listening to <laughs> listening to music. But also, I I do read a lot, like in, in English. I'm a massive book fan, so I, I read. Me too. I I'm there with you. <laughs> so I um I read something like ages ago that um on like a language learning blog, and it was like don't I think it said something like don't try and do things that you don't like to do in your target language because you're just not going to stick to it. So I was like, okay, what do I like doing? Like reading, I guess, like reading, music, like YouTube videos. So I just kind of did all the things I normally do <laughs> in my normal English life and um, did that in Italian. I guess the reading was obviously the most difficult part because it's, I had to start with really like baby books or like really simple books. So I'd be like, I understand what's happening. Storyline is shit, but I can at least follow, <laughs> I can follow what's happening. So that's fine um and yeah I mean obviously having an Italian boyfriend is like the creme de la creme <laughs> yes but do you speak does it okay can he speak English yeah yeah okay a good level or through you he speaks a decent level so when we met um like two and a half years ago he already spoke English oh wow already had I would say that he was maybe at like an A2 Oh, okay, good. So he used to go to English schools, like in Rome, um, like after work and stuff. Like he, he was always really proactive about like learning English, which was like, yes, good. Yes. <laughs> we would not have been able to, I don't know how we would have formed a relationship. Oh, <laughs> yes. It was being like as low as it was. Um, now it's obviously his English is <laughs> so much better because mm -hmm. you've got like a, an in-house uh, <laughs> teacher. <laughs> But we speak, we speak in English pretty much like eighty percent of the time. Mm -hmm. um, now, like in the last year, so he he doesn't speak to me in English anymore. He speaks to me in Italian. Okay, good. A pact that we made <laughs> a while ago when um, when I was just like, oh, I need I need a push. Like I'm just gonna I can easily float along in this like average kind of Italian level for the next five years very easily. So I. I asked him to just speak to me in Italian and he stopped for a while because he was like oh but even when I talk to an Italian you always respond in English and I'm like don't worry about what I'm doing worry about what you're doing like you speak <laughs> Italian I'll respond in Italian when I'm ready but I need that input yes so uh, yeah so now like I'll respond sometimes in Italian sometimes in English but I'm always trying to just oh do you know what I totally feel you like I'm where you I'm where I'm where you described now in my relationship because when I met my boyfriend, we used Google Translate. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and now my boyfriend is around an A2 level, I would say. And that's just being through like listening to me because I've just been like English, English, English. And he was, to his credit, like studying a little bit himself before he met me. But now I've literally just had that conversation with my boyfriend where I'm like, you need to speak to me in Italian now because I need to hear the words I need to practice and I've literally it's like we're so similar I've just literally had this conversation where I was like I'll respond when I can in Italian but I need to hear you talking to me in, in Italian not in English <laughs> it's got to happen and I think like whenever you ask their response is always going to be yeah like oh but you're responding in English and so they'll yes. respond they'll continue like Yes, definitely. And I'm the same as you. I don't want to continue like at this basic level of Italian for all of my stay here. Like I know that there are opportunities and things that I want to do that maybe I can't because I can't speak in Italian. So, for example, um, a journalist wants to interview me about this whole Miss Brittley concept that I do for a friend that I know. But his English is about my level of Italian so for this I'm getting like anxiety because I'm like I can't how are we going to communicate so it's these opportunities where I'm like do you know what I really want to up myself a little bit because it's going to improve so much of my life here so 100%. I think it and also goes way beyond making friends as well I think making yes. the language to make friends is like the absolute basic thing that you want to do in a new country anyway but it's these things, like what you just explained, little opportunities and little job opportunities and sort of bigger opportunities as well. But yes, definitely. You know, all of these things. Like I, so I was thinking about this as well. When, so I'm um, writing a book. Yes, I wanted to talk, I wanted to mention this at the beginning. I saw on your Instagram that you're writing a book. <laughs> so tell me about this. 
finish it and I'm like in the editing process. And I was doing like some research because obviously if I hopefully like get it published traditionally, it would be with like a UK publisher or an American publisher. <clears throat> Um, but I was doing a lot of research and I know that in Italy, especially Rome, there's a huge like literary community. Yes. Like, I mean, it's like obviously part of the arts, which is like hugely valued and loved in Italy. And I have a friend who just recently published a book and she's doing all of these amazing things, like doing like book tours and book wow. all of these things. Um, and it's not because her book is like a bestseller or anything. It's just kind of the way things are done. Mm -hmm. so it. and I was like oh my god my Italian needs to like get so much better because when the time comes that like my book is ready to be published I don't want to miss on like international opportunities and yes book related stuff here to hope maybe like try and get it translated in Italian and so it's true it's like goes beyond friendships it's also like work opportunities and all of that stuff that definitely and the things that we would take for granted like if everybody spoke English here like you would never think twice about like you know these opportunities but when there's the language to think about it limits you a little bit so yes I agree definitely yeah definitely so get your boyfriend to just continue to just talk in Italian non-stop definitely listen I'm playing this video when this video airs on Sunday I'm playing this video to him just to remind him <laughs> of our little pact <laughs> so yeah don't... it helped me so much and I don't I don't really want to I don't want to subscribe to the whole, oh, just get an Italian boyfriend, you'll learn the language kind of thing. Oh, God, yeah, yes. True. But it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's <laughs> it true. Hurt. It can only be, it can only bring benefits. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of learning a lot of just like little daily colloquial things that you might not yes. pick up on, like when you're with a group of friends or with like your boyfriend's family or something. It's like intimate things, like you're cooking together and like, yes saying like oh give me the I don't know tomatoes instead of pass me the tomatoes or like little little casual things that like you just kind of absorb a little bit more <laughs> definitely but I have to ask you has your boyfriend taught you any Sicilian um yes actually it's not so much that he's taught me Sicilian it's more that when I was in Sicily his friends and his family were just like throw some dialect uh... <laughs> All of them are very offensive. They're all swear words. They're all yeah, like blasphemy. Same, same. <laughs> but the one I do know that isn't a swear word, Amini, Amini, which is like Andy Amor, Amini. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually. So, yes, this is the, the least offensive one that I've learned so far. <laughs> Like, oh my God, it's way too offensive for way too offensive <laughs> we can't do it I can't pg this video so yes no <laughs> but there we go so I'm curious then because on my channel everybody speaks about how different life is in the north of Italy to the south of Italy now don't get me wrong Roman Salerno I know before everybody bites my head off that it is not technically north and south but there is a difference <laughs> in where we are in Italy so I feel like perhaps there is a difference in terms of the pace of life and the culture so I just want to explore this a little bit what is the pace of life like in Rome obviously it's a it's the capital city it's like a very big place what is the pace of life like in Rome so Rome is very chaotic it's a very chaotic city um there's not a lot of order so <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if London was London without the organisation and the order. Oh my God, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, like there isn't much order, it's very chaotic. Um, but the pace of life, I'm quite biased because obviously as a Londoner, the pace of life for me is slow. Mm -hmm. I oh have... God, don't come to Salerno, you'll think we've completely stopped. Don't come to Salerno, if you think Rome is slow, don't come to Salerno because you'll be like, what's happened? Are people alive? <laughs> why I didn't move to the south of Italy because I, I've always been in love with the idea of living in the south of Italy that's always what I wanted but the literally the only reason why I didn't is because I was like I know myself I will drive myself yes. bad like I need to be in a capital city I didn't want to be in like Milan or because that's like too north so I was yes. like my Rome is like the sweet spot but for me it's slow but I know that for everyone else it's like fast paced it's a capital city mm -hmm. um it's kind of I'm kind of used to it now. I don't see it as being slow now anymore. For me, it's kind of like a nice average, a nice middle between like hectic London and like slow Sicily. I don't know. 
it's like a, yeah, it's like a nice medium <laughs> But yeah. what do you find? Like, do the shops and businesses close in the afternoon as they do here in Salerno? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do. But I don't think it's not as extreme as in the south. So, like in Sicily, for example, they're literally closed for like four and a half hours in the middle of the day. <laughs> it's true, but it's like that here in Salerno. You'll have shops close at like one thirty. They reopen at five. Oh my god! Yes, no, no. It's not like no. It's not that that extreme in Rome. So that's like proper like Sicilian style basically. Ah, yes. I have clothes from one until like 3.30. Okay, Which, so it's not so bad, like two hours or an hour and a half. Yeah, it's kind of okay. I guess if you want, like I work from home, so that doesn't really bother me at all because that's literally my lunch hour. So um, I'm not going to go to the bank like on my lunch hour or anything. But when I was working in schools, mm-hmm. my lunch hour was like, you know, you have like a one hour lunch break and like in London, I don't know about you, but I'll use that one hour to like quickly have my lunch. I'll go to the post office to send off a letter. I'll go to the bank and I'll return like a pair of socks from H&M or something. <laughs> because you can return things in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like you can run a few errands like during yeah. the lunch, you know. It's but true. Things. Here it's hard. Here I find you have to plan your life a lot more. Like, okay, you have the morning and then you have the evening and that's it. You have to really think and be more conscious about your time than you would in the U- in the UK, especially in London where, like, everything's open all the time. Yes. That's, yeah, you can't just randomly be like, oh, I finished lunch early. I'm going to, like, pop up quickly and, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, whatever you need to do. <laughs> you can't. No, yeah. it's definitely a lot different. Uh, but in terms of like the people, then how do you find the people in Rome? Are they quite friendly, or are they a little bit like maybe how we are in London? I no, I would say that Romans are not like Londoners at all. <laughs> Good. Like, I, yeah, no, I haven't really find I haven't really found much connect between like Londoners and Romans at all. Um, but I will say that like in my disclaimer we always have to put a disclaimer because it's always yes oh god disclaimer because everybody's gonna say up, 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 up. disclaimer <laughs> yeah, like clever clogs that i don't know is gonna like catch you out on like some things that like, disclaimer my personal experience i'm sure romans in general are lovely and blah 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 whatever in my experience i find like romans to be very aggressive really very aggressive like in their mannerisms and the way they speak in their actions like it's so all you need to do, like, to like, for my point to be proven, is like come to Rome and go on the metro. That's it. <laughs> it is so, like, it is so difficult to enter, like, to get onto the metro, or no, to leave the metro. Sorry, because people will just be pushing you, trying to get in, and wow. it's you can clearly see like people are like stressed and trying to get out of the train, and people will just barge past you and not make eye contact, and they'll just like they're just very aggressive, and it's so rude. That is like something that a lot of people that I've spoken to who live in Rome agree on. Like it's like a, it's a thing. Wow. And, um, and that only really translates in like other, maybe like in a bar or when you're out in like a piazza and it's busy, they are very like boisterous. And I think if, if you are a, a shy person, it could be quite intimidating. I think, mm-hmm. especially if it's like a group of Romans, because they are even like the women, they're fiery, like they're so always like ready to fight. <laughs> no, but listen, I think that's a shared quality here, like in Salerno as well, because for me, like it sounds like everybody's having a constant argument. I know that it isn't the way. I know a lot of it's the passion and the way they speak, but oh my goodness, it really sounds like everybody's having an argument all the time. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I guess it's kind of like that in in Rome as well thing is I like I asked my boyfriend to kind of confirm this because I was like I don't really know for me like Romans and like Sicilians seemed like on the surface very similar in terms of mm. like how they are and how energetic they are for want of a better <laughs> word <laughs> yes <laughs> and like the kind of mannerisms the way they speak and the way they hug each other and the way they interact with their friends and family they are they seem quite similar and my boyfriend agreed like he confirmed so that's from a Sicilian <laughs> okay there we go there we have it we're clearing up some myths here which is good <laughs> but what do you find in terms of like 
do you feel that Rome has a lot of opportunity, like more opportunity for maybe work or leisure than other parts of Italy, for example? I think so, yeah. I I mean, I for one haven't like struggled to find anything to do in terms of like leisure, like in my free time or anything. It's even just, okay, in terms of restaurants and bars, which is the standard thing for, for Italy, they're everywhere. There are loads yeah. of different places. Um, but even like work-wise, um, so like my boyfriend is a developer, for example, and he constantly finds online, there are just like hundreds of events all the time for like in a digital space for techies and developers and programmers and, and whatnot. Um, and even like startups, there are loads of media startups, loads of events for loads of different types of industries. So my, like my situation is different. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a copywriter. So my whole, my whole job is about the English language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same as yours. So like I can't, yeah. even, I can't really get involved in those spaces because like they'll all they'll be like maybe a group of writers and copywriters but it's for the Italian language yes and it doesn't help my work at all so for, for me personally in my career no I'm in shit that's because I, I write in English and my work is in English and there's nothing I can do about that yes <laughs> for my boyfriend and for other friends that I have who work in like different industries they seem to have a lot going on and have like constant and events and work related things that they're doing so I I do think that there are quite a few opportunities in Rome okay what about the cost of living okay last thing about last comparison because people tend to say the more north you go like whether Rome or beyond the more expensive it becomes do you agree with that is it quite expensive living in Rome um I yes I it's not as cheap as I at the beginning I felt it was so much cheaper obviously Mm -hmm. I'm fresh from London. Yes. Um, yeah, no, when I first got here, obviously, like, fresh from London, where any, everything in London costs a bloody arm and a leg, like, you breathe and that's a hundred pounds. That's true. When I came to Rome, I was like, oh, my God, like, how is everything so cheap? Like, so, so, so cheap. Obviously, now I've been here for, like, three years, I'm, like, getting used to it, and it's, I think, um like going out and about isn't that expensive like dinners and drinks are not really that expensive I'll say like a you get like a spritz for like five euros yeah the same here it's the same kind of price here definitely I was like if you go to a fancy I mean I've paid 10 euros for a spritz before oh god yeah where were you (laughs) (laughs) a place that was way too fancy (laughs) Listen, Positano, Positano along the Amalfi, I saw a spritz there for €9.50 and I literally almost died because the most expensive spritz I've paid for in Salerno has probably been around €7. Really? Oh my God, yeah, no, in Rome you can easily hit €10 for a spritz. That's only like in a, yeah, a really expensive place that you wouldn't really go to as a regular, as your regular Mm -hmm. way. Um, And like eating out, like it's not really that expensive. What costs a lot, I think, is the rent. Uh, like the, the rent in Rome is like compared to what the salaries are, they're way too expensive. Like if you, I think I, so I always paid before I me and my boyfriend moved in together, and I was like house sharing. I never paid less than five hundred euros. Wow, and that was when you were living with like other people. Yeah, actually, no, that's a lie. I did pay four hundred and fifty once, but oh my god, moving bills wow yeah like and it's it gets really expensive if you don't and again if you know someone like if you know the landlord they will just knock off 200 euros off your rent just like that <laughs> just like that and um, um because in one of the places i lived with um one of the girls that i was living with she was friends with the landlord mm-hmm. and our rooms were like the same they were meant to be the same price i was paying 450 she was paying 300 a month and I was like, it's wow. like, oh yeah, like I, I know the landlord. Oh uh, my god! Like that's insane. So again, it really is who you know. But yes, it pays to know people here in Italy, definitely to make connections. When you think about the value of renting, like one room in a house, it's probably like not. All the houses in Rome are never really modern, nice apartments. They're always like a little bit. In the beginning, with your like beer goggles, kind of they seem antique and. <laughs> traditional Italian after a while you take your beer goggles off and you realize this is just old 
This is just an old building. It's dilapidated. <laughs> you're really not paying, you're really not getting what you pay for yeah. in terms of the actual house itself. Yeah. Um, like obviously, you know, it's Rome, so well, you've got to be great. So you're paying for the area, basically. Like, to do a quick comparison before we move on, like rooms in Salerno, you can get for like 250, 300 euros, maybe 350. So it's very different, definitely. Uh, but I think you pay for the area, as you've already said so rightly. Yeah. So let's finish our lovely interview together. I want to just summarize some advice. So for people that are moving to Italy, a lot of people follow my channel who are considering moving to Italy from whatever country they may be coming from. But what are some do's and don'ts? So like looking back on your own experience, what are some do's and don'ts that you can say to somebody thinking of moving to Italy? Oh, I, okay, I would say don't, like, just come here on a whim, like I did, or like <laughs> most people do. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, because everyone's got to do what they want to do. If you feel like just packing up and leaving and coming here, do so. But life is going to be so much easier if you just plan, save money. Like, I came to Rome with literally, like, 600 euros, 600 pounds in my account. Like, it... It, I just came like with nothing. Um, save some money, learn the language. Like get, I would say, get to like at least a one, a uh, a one level. Mm -hmm. All the conversation and do all the little things, the little admin things that you're you're going to have to do. Um, save yourself the anxiety and the trouble, and just yeah, learn, learn Italian, learn, learn, learn Italian. <laughs> yes, I agree. The biggest thing that I would say learn the language because it honestly it can be a really miserable experience otherwise if you can't communicate yeah so plus English is not widely spoken here mm -hmm. and especially like yeah from Rome I would I would say only in like Milan do people really speak English even even like in Turin like I've got friends there that they always say the same thing as well that English isn't really spoken there so you know yeah, I would say people just don't listen to all the like all the stuff that you read online that people say like, oh, you can get by on basic. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> it's <laughs> tough. Trust me, it's tough. And I, I make sure I talk about this in my videos because as much as I'm very like live outside your comfort zone and very optimistic, I'm also realistic. It's been bloody tough not speaking the language. So, yes, I agree with you. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, what else? I would say the other, the only other really main thing I would say is just to come with an open mind, because depending on where you come from, especially like obviously we come, we're from London and you don't really want you don't really want for anything in London. Like we've kind of got everything we need. Everything is really easy. You can just like yeah, it's it's kind of an easy life. <laughs> <And> so, yes. <laughs> you come from London or England or the States or whatever. I come here and just instantly feel like there are so many problems because there are but I think they, these those problems like the famous bureaucracy that everyone kind of talks about all of these issues I think needs to just be seen as like the initial hurdle that you really need to just jump over get through it any which way you can you might need a therapist like it gets stressful <laughs> I guess that's just but especially if you like if you're single and you're alone when you have an Italian partner oh my god like it's just so much easier because you've got someone who already knows how to navigate all of this all of this yeah. stuff they're healthy yeah. so yeah I would say just try not to be overwhelmed with all those initial struggles because there will be struggles and you just kind of have to keep telling yourself that okay this is the the crappy part and I just need to get through this and you know the sunshine <laughs> the part of gold is at the end of the rainbow <laughs> just oh keep... definitely and I will add one thing to this as well like don't listen to other people's negative experiences either fully like remember that you create your own experience because I have this big love-hate relationship with expat groups online because on the one hand they're really informative on the other they are like big I don't know dream dampeners like people but like don't come here blah, blah, blah. it's very hard like just have an open mind, exactly like what you said. Create your own story, definitely. Ah, oh, thank you so much. It's been amazing to speak with you. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to pop all your links here so people can follow you and show you some support as well. So thank you so, so much.